friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead with what my grandmother would tell you to save, part two. Now, before we start, um, I made a video, and I didn't make the video, I, I, I didn't turn the camera on, but I put this piece of parchment on my cutting board, and I used my uh, meat tenderizer to tenderize a steak, that little steak, and I made it into supper. And then, I took my piece of parchment, because it was not ripped or damaged by the hammer, went with a bit of Dawn, under hot water, washed it all, rinsed it all under the sprayer, and then rinsed it with cold water, and look, I hung it over the handle of my door, uh, my oven door, and it's ready to go again, seriously. So that's what I meant by rewashing your, your parchment. Now, there's a couple of things my grandmother wouldn't use, and one of these is Keurigs, but how he's addicted to them. Um, when he's home on the weekends, he only uses like two a day, but when he's home on the weekends and not working, he makes a pot of coffee. But these are ideal for when he, you know, just wants a cup of coffee on his way out the door to work. Now, one of the great things about these is... A, you can take the coffee out. You're going to have to clean it out anyway. You can take the coffee out of the, the used coffee and put it in your compost. And then this is already going to have a hole poked in the bottom. So wouldn't that make a, little, a great little seedling starter? I'm just saying, somebody told me that yesterday and I thought that was a brilliant idea. Now, you already saw me make a watering can out of a vinegar jug. I still use this for my house plants. And now I know we talked about washing, reusing um, plastic bags, like food bags. You can do that. Look at this. This is what our milk comes in. This is a little over a liter, a little over a quarter milk. And we just snip the corner off and it goes in a jug and we snip the corner off and we pour, right? Well, years ago, and I don't know why I stopped doing this, years ago, Howard, um, I w when we were really, really, really broke and the kids were small, I would, as soon as I finished a bag of milk, I would wash it with hot soapy water, rinse it, and then hang it over like a wooden spoon or something um, it, it, on the counter to drip dry. And these... I, I sent Howard sandwiches. I sent Howard sandwiches to work in these things. But what else can you do with these? These make great freezer bags. Why? Because they're sturdy and they're food grade. So from now on, I'm, I actually am going to put up a little clothesline across my sink, over my sink, so that whenever I have a bag, I'm just going to go clip it to that when it's washed. Now, yes, you can reuse your freezer bags. I don't necessarily recommend it with meat, but when you've, when you've frozen something with meat, because it gets right in there. But when it comes to things like vegetables, um, if you can cut the end off of it and then empty it out, not, not the top, the end, it now becomes like a pint bag for something else if you wash it. And somebody else gave me a really awesome idea. Um, throw, like, if you have, like, a freezer bag, a Ziploc bag that's in really good shape, and you but it's used, turn it inside out and throw it in the laundry with your wash. And then when it comes out, you just rinse it off and hang it up to dry. Boom. I mean... This is brilliant stuff. Now, back a while back, I, I, I told people about this and, and everyone said, well, why would I, I just, you know, smash all my soap slivers together and make another bar. Well, I don't bother with that. My bars of soap are homemade and they're smaller than normal because they last longer, right? The older they get, the longer they last because they get, they dry out and dry out and dry out. Well, whenever I get, a soap sliver or or the soap is too small to handle or too thin to handle I have this shampoo bottle 
And in it, I have three marbles. And whenever I have soap slivers, I just drop them in. I cut them up, drop them in here, add a half a cup of hot water, give it a shake. And this sits on my sink as a soap pump. But don't forget the marbles in the bottom. Okay. And don't let it get too sludgy thick. If it's getting hard to press, add more water. But this is, this is my hand, hand soap and I'm, I never run out. Now, I want to tell you that that 44 pound bag of flour I got, when I put it all into baggies in the freezer, and I, I well, the top was open, but I cut the bottom off it and I cut it up one side and it folded out into probably a two and a half by three foot thick sheet of brown paper. Now that has many, many uses. You can send parcels with that. It's nice and heavy duty. You could probably take it apart. It is, it's got like three layers. But what I used it for is that we've been saving our large cardboard boxes in all winter and the new beds we put in, the bottoms were lined with cardboard to uh, act as a weed barrier. But my watermelon bed that Howie just filled, um, I put, I had him put that flower bag, three layers thick of brown paper right in the bottom of that and put the soil on top. It makes awesome weed barrier and it encourages worms. And that gets me, brings me to the next. These paper grocery bags. This came from the Chinese food store. It's got a couple of grease stains on it. So we'll use it as an example. Look how sturdy these are. Now our IGA uses only paper bags and you still have to pay for them, but they don't give you plastic anymore. So what I do is I come home and I just start when I want these as a parcel, there's seams at the bottom. Oh, let me see if I can do this a little easier for you to see. Right? There's the seam on the bottom. You start by pulling it with that corner, right? I know it's fussy, but when you are sending parcels to your loved ones at Christmas, you will thank me. That's crazy. Okay, so see how we kind of open that? Now we're going to very carefully open it there and there. Now we're carefully going to go to the other side and do the same thing. Your patience will be rewarded in the size of usable paper you have to wrap a parcel in. This one's being stubborn. This one's being stubborn. Okay, there we go. Now look, once you have this all opened up like this, you go to the side or the back and find the seam. There's the seam. And look, can you see what I'm doing here? Don't try and rip it all the way down, but grab it every once in a while and pull. Now folks, look. This has so many uses. My mother would do this to line her Christmas cake pans because we didn't have parchment or we didn't know parchment existed. This can wrap a parcel, really sturdy. This can be a garden plan. This can be ironed out and your grandkids can do a whole scenery on it in crayon or paints. Brown paper, no Gracie, it's not for you. Brown paper bags are one of the greatest things to save. And they're much sturdier than the paper rolls you buy at the post office or the dollar store to wrap your parcels in. So, also, let's talk about, now we don't do it often, but when we go shopping, I usually, not usually, but about once a month, I buy a rotisserie chicken. Those things have gone from uh, $5.99 to 12 bucks. So I don't buy them often. But that wrote, do you know what they've been doing too? They've been putting a meat diaper in the bottom and soaking up all that good chicken juice. I was so mad 
So I will only buy a rotisserie chicken if there's not a diaper under it because that juice is gold, right? But the dish, the, 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 you know, the clear dome lid, baby, I planted cabbages in mine and the clamshell, clear plastic clamshells you get from the bakery or at buying bakery goods or, or the, the ones when you buy the big, um, things of spinach and lettuce fresh in the fresh produce section, man, oh man, seed trays and domes. Every time you look at something now, unless you're a hoarder, okay? If you're a hoarder, don't listen to me because, you know, that, that's a whole other issue. But every time something is brought into your home, look at it with new eyes. For instance, this is a Calypso, um, a Calypso lemonade. And a lot of sugar, but it was a three melon calypso lemonade. Now I'm going to tell you a little story. A few, oh, a few years back, over 20 years ago, when I first started canning, when I first, no, okay, over 25 years ago, when I first started canning, uh, we lived in a little place called Castleton Colburn. I mean, our phone number was Castleton, but our address was Colburn. I never did understand it, but there was a, there was an old fella that lived on a farm around the corner. And uh, we stopped in every once in a while to see how he's doing old Ray. And uh, one day we were leaving and he had a cardboard box in his garage full of, they were like V8 bottles, uh, but it wasn't V8. It was like a, some kind of tomato juice cocktail bottle. And they were very much like this. And he had washed them all. And put them, you know, put them in the in the garage waiting for the next time we visited. And he said, can you use those for anything? And I said, and I said, I I'm sorry, I can't. I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. I said, they're already been sealed. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to drive all the canners crazy. These are industrial seals this is a glass bottle i get any more of these i'll be saving them and canning ketchup in them i shit you not um i wish i had known then what i know now i mean we don't reuse disposable seals unless we're using them for vacuum sealing or dry storage right but I'm telling you, I would be a rebel, my, me personally. Yes, I would do it in the pressure canner, even if it was tomato juice, but I would be a rebel canner because I see absolutely nothing wrong with that seal. And save, um, I save, like I sometimes, yeah, I buy, I buy ketchup. I'm going to make ketchup again this year, but I have some of my kick-ass ketchup in the pantry and we weren't fussy on it because I didn't add enough sugar, right? So when my, when my, you know, uh, Elmer, Elmer tomato ketchup gets down to a half of the squirt bottle, I pull out one of my pints and I top her back up. But the thing is, is I'm going to keep, you have no idea what uses squirt bottles have. Watering your plants. Uh, filling it with Dawn and vinegar because yes, the, you know, you to squirt down your shower stall walls and up under the rim of your, of your toilet and stuff. Always, always, always. Everything you buy, look at the packaging with new eyes. Okay. We always are, you know, it's time. It's time to teach these young whippersnappers what reduce, reuse, and recycle really means. Okay, here's an update. Um, a lot of people gave a lot of really wonderful ideas for reusing things. And I've done this one before, which is I'm asking Howie to save all of his Tim Horton cups, even if he only does one a week. Save them for me. And I will save any cups I, of tea I get from Tim Hortons, which is maybe twice a month. So they cannot be used 
as biodegradable pots because they are two sheets of paper with a sheet of plastic in between. So they look like paper, but they're not, they're not, they're not biodegradable. Okay. But save those, rinse them out and save them. They make great tomato pots as you go from smaller to bigger pots when you're, when you're starting your plants from seed. However, somebody said that, um, they could, you could, any bags like, you know, my frozen vegetables or anything like that, any, any Ziploc bags that I use can be reused if you turn them inside out and throw them in the wash with your whites, because most people put a little shot of bleach in with their whites, right? I did that. I have a high efficiency whirlpool and the thin bag, the thinner bag was garbage, but the big thick ones that I use with the flat bottoms, it washed okay until I looked at it afterwards and it had tiny little chew holes in it. So if you have a high efficiency washer whirlpool with the flat agitator on the bottom, don't be doing that. You'll just ruin the bags. I recommend if you want to resave your Ziploc bags, um, put them in a bag in the freezer until you have enough. Then fill a sink with hot, soapy, bleachy water and get them in there and get them scrubbing. Scrub them and rinse them really well and then you know, hang them somewhere, but you know, hang them. I have a jug with tall utensils that don't fit in my drawer. And I just turn the bags over when they're rinsed on top of those utensils to dry, right? This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our half acre homestead. And somebody said, I'm going to do a cross stitch that says, squeeze that quarter and make it fart an extra nickel. If you do that, I'd like a copy or at least a picture of it. Take care. God bless.